for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our physical therapist, Harold, and Harold is examining a patient who sustained a right trimalleolar fracture 10 weeks ago. During the joint mobility assessment, the patient lacks posterior talocoral capsular mobility. Which of the following compensations is the most likely to be observed during the right stance phase? So we have A, vaulting, B, excessive posterior tilting, C, circumduction, and D, increased backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. All right. So this is this gate type of question. You know, there's a lot of gate we're involved in here. So we really have to slow it up a little bit, get our system together of how we're going to break this down and answer it. I'm going to give you my strategy that I use right now, exactly how I process through it. Okay, so Harold is examining a patient who sustained a right trimalleolar fracture 10 weeks ago. Now, it's at least good for you to understand what the trimalleolar fracture is. If you've never seen it before or heard of it before, that's where a patient has a fracture at the ankle and they fracture the lateral malleolus, the medial malleolus, and what is known as the posterior malleolus as well. And if you're not familiar with the posterior malleolus, that is the most distal part of the tibia on the posterior aspect of the that bone. All right. So that is a trimalleolar fracture, fracture of those three malleoli. Now that happened 10 weeks ago, pretty straightforward. During the joint mobility assessment, the patient lacks posterior talocoral capsular mobility. Now you have to slow up here. You have to. Now, you know, joint mobility assessment is looking at the, the capsular mobility. We see that the patient has a limitation in the posterior capsular direction. So what does that mean for us, though? What is that limiting? Now, there's two major motions that happen at the talocoral joint, right? It's plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So if a person lacks posterior capsular mobility, what motion is that going to limit? I need you with me right now. What is it? Talk to me. You should be saying dorsal flexion right now. So already, what do I know? My patient has had a fracture. Uh, the, we don't know if it's healing well, but it doesn't seem like it matters. What we do know is our patient is lacking dorsiflexion. That's the big key. Now we go down to the question stem. It says, which of the following compensations is the most likely to be observed during the right stance phase. So we're talking about gait right now. What are the compensations that we're gonna see for a patient who has decreased dorsiflexion? That's what you should be asking yourself. All right, think about that for a moment. What type of compensations would I see with a patient who lacks dorsiflexion, specifically in the stance phase? All right, so let's go down to our answer choices. I'll read them through again. A, vaulting. B, excessive posterior pelvic tilting. C, is circumduction. And D, is the increased backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. Okay, so let's talk about vaulting. Now, I'll tell you already that a lot of people have answered this question, and they put vaulting down. Now, I'm going to tell you why Kyle Rice doesn't like vaulting here. And the reason being is... You know, vaulting is the act of plantar flexing the foot, the act of plantar flexing the foot in order to help clear a longer limb. It's the act of plantar flexing the foot. It's not when a person is in, is in plantar flexion. It's not if a person's stuck in plantar flexion that you do vaulting. It's when a person actively plantar flexes their foot in order to clear the longer limb. So let me give you an idea of what we're talking about. Let's say that we had a longer limb on the left side. One of the different compensations that we could do is we plantar flex on the right side, aka vaulting, in order to clear the left leg, in order to clear that longer limb. Now, let me ask you this. In the question that I asked you already, did it say anything about one of the legs being longer than the other? Yes or no? All right. For, the, for those of you that are in the car right now, you might have to rewind me. But I'm telling you, in the question, it does not say anything about leg length discrepancy or anything like that. And so I don't like vaulting as the answer. I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to that for right now. Let's go to B. B says excessive posterior pelvic tilting. Hmm. So we got to think about this for a second. What is the major impairment that we're dealing with? 
You should be saying limited dorsiflexion. Well, where is dorsiflexion the most important during the stance phase of gait? Think about it now. Where is dorsiflexion the most important during the stance phase? You should be telling me terminal stance, baby. That's where you're getting maximum dorsiflexion. We need the dorsiflexion there. All right. And so terminal stance is where we're really going to have the problem. Now, let me ask you this. If our patient has limited dorsiflexion, do you think that they're going to posterior pelvic tilt? Is that going to be the compensation that they're going to do? Or that you think they're going to anteriorly pelvic tilt? Because I think anteriorly. And the reason being is if our patient posterior pelvic tilts, doesn't that put a lot of stress on the, the iliopsoas? It's like putting a lot of tension through it. And we know in terminal stance, the leg has to go back into hip extension. So if anything, posterior pelvic tilting is going to keep that leg from going back there any further. We don't want posterior pelvic tilting. If anything, we need anterior pelvic tilting, anterior. So B is the exact opposite of what I would expect. Now, I'm seeing a couple messages here. So I want to slow up for a little bit and tell you something. I want to tell you this, that our patient lacks dorsiflexion. Am I right? Okay, great. Now, if the patient lacks dorsiflexion, that means that their hip cannot go back very far because they don't have the dorsiflexion to do it. So what we need to do is a compensation that's still going to allow our hip to go back further, still allow that leg to go back further. And so does posterior pelvic tilting do that? No, get up and do it for yourself. Try to walk, try to move. Posterior pelvic tilting is going to keep the leg from going back there far. But if you anterior pelvic tilt it, it lets the leg go back further, baby. All right. So B cannot be the answer here. Let's look at C. A lot of people pick C. I wonder if you did. Did you pick C? All right. So here's the deal. C says circumduction. Now, let me read to you the question, Sim. It says, which of the following compensations is the most likely? to be observed during the right stance phase. Can y'all tell me when does circumduction occur? Does it occur during the stance phase or does it occur during swing? Let me say it again. Does it occur during the stance phase or does it occur during swing? You should be saying, well, circumduction is, is a swing phase compensation. It's a swing phase deviation. It doesn't happen in stance phase. And so C can't possibly be right because it's not answering the question. All right. We're looking for something, some type of compensation that's done during the stance phase on the right. Okay. So I don't like C. Now this is weird because we're down to our final answer. We got to make sure that this one's right. D says increased backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. Increased backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. Now I'm going to go back one more time and say, if our patient lacks dorsiflexion, that means that they're going to have a hard time getting that leg back into terminal stance. So we have to compensate. None of these answers say anything about, well, have the person do more hip extension. It doesn't say anything like that. It doesn't say have the patient do more anterior pelvic tilting. It doesn't say that. But can the patient do backward rotation on the right and get that leg back there further? Is that possible? I mean, please stand up, get out of the car, walk on the side of the road if you have to. You know, really try this. If you backwardly rotate on the right with your pelvis, can you get that leg back there further? Yes or no? The answer is yes, baby. And so it is a compensation for a patient that has limited dorsiflexion. Now, this is tricky, baby, but it is the right freaking answer. And you need to be ready for this on your MPTE. Again, we're looking for a compensation for someone who has limited dorsiflexion. So our final answer tonight is D, increased backward rotation of the pelvis on the right. I know this one sent y'all for a loop. I get it. But you know I have to ask you the tough ones, so I over-prepare you for the actual MPT. So you go in there and dominate it, all right?